when do you actually need simulation when you're doing product design. So this is very uh, interesting topic uh, because this is something you know every uh, engineer and product designer should know because when do you actually use simulation. So there are three let's say main, main ways uh, where you will actually need simulation in a product. So the first is before the product is actually created, simulation will help you to find and design the right product. Secondly, after the product is designed, simulation will help you to check your design to be sure that it's not, uh, it's not failing. And finally, after uh, after the product is released and sold to your clients, uh, you may have problems and FA will be here to check uh, what is the reason. So I'll present very briefly this topic more in details because it's very interesting and I am sure you will learn a lot of things. So first of all, simulation in the product conception. So when designing a new product, uh, you always have to select the best option for, from a range of possible choices. So, uh, and if you're the designer, you don't really know which one is better. Let's say you know it uh, from experience. If you have a lot of experience, you know this kind of product is working, this kind of design, maybe not. Uh, but it's very difficult to describe and actually uh, this is something simulation can help you uh, to, uh, to, to do because it's very important to find the optimum design, the best design. Why? Because actually it will not cost more to produce, produce or to design it will, it will, and it might cost even less and everyone will be happier because product will be more resistant and he, he, it will sell better. So that's why. So, uh, as I was selling, searching for the optimal design is not easy and it takes time. So, we generally choose something close to what we think is optimal, but actually what, hap what is happening a lot is that we, simple, we simply just enhance an existing design. So, we're taking something that exists and we're saying, oh, I'm adding something, some mass here, I'm adding some part here, oh, now this is new design. Actually, this is just a bit improved of what exists, but there are so many products that could be created and doesn't exist because simply people never thought about it. So if you had a way to help you to conceive products that no one ever thought about, that would be a huge leap for your company, wouldn't, be? wouldn't it be? So how actually can you search for better design in a systematic and practical and also affordable way? Because it's easy to say, oh, you have to be creative, you're a designer, so just think about the solution. Actually, there are things that uh, you can do if you're not so creative either. So you can use FEA simulation uh, and tools that I call optimization. So it's called topology optimization, for example. Uh, and as well, you can use the linear static that I will present today to check the product. So um, I'm not, I will not talk about topology optimization in this webinar because this is not the topic. Um, I will just tell you that this is a very useful tool to make the right choice and provide uh, optimal design for your model. So if you are interested by this topic, you can go on YouTube and search for top topology optimization for better design with minus NFX and you will find this webinar that I did, uh, I did previously which is very interesting uh, and as you see a lot of people watch it so you can watch this, this webinar. Now um, how do you use simulation to check the product design and why do you actually need simulation to do that? Well actually designing a product is not straightforward process. It's not something that just come to your mind on the paper and in one blow you will get a product because you know, there's a lot of things to think. Product may be used like that, it may be used like this and you cannot think about all 
the cases, all this, the possibilities that uh, people will use your product. So because of that, you have to design it incrementally. You have first to do one design, then you have to check, let's say, a number of cases that it may fail. Then if it fails, you just redesign it. So you add some part here, you add some mass, you redesign it. And this is what I call trial error process. You're basically wanting to find the, fail, the failure mode of your product to make it better. So it will not fail like that. So this is why I call that trial error. And because of the design should be checked at each step, um, we want to be sure that we have the right tool to check this design every time. Because you have, if you have to do a lot of iterations, you need some tool which is very easy to run again the design by doing a small modification and just get uh, new results. And you see here on the, the example on the right that I have like four design modifications, but in an actual product, you may have much more than that. You may have thousands iterations before uh, getting a product because such products are very expensive and the companies are, uh, you know, they are living because they are selling this product. So if you get a failure that will get millions of dollars of, you know, problems, uh, that's something that company definitely wants to avoid. So that's why, you know, simulation is a very useful tool in this kind of situation. Now, um, you know, the third, the third, the uh, you know, the third case you use simulation is when your product actually fails. Because, you know, um, let's not uh, deceive ourselves by uh, telling us that design never fails. That's not true, you know. There's a lot of products that fails, and your product could fail also. Even if you, if you think you have the best design in the world, it may happen that someday one client will use it in the wrong way and it will just break. So you have, when it happens, because you didn't uh, forecast this, you have to actually know what is the cause to improve the design again. And that's why you use simulation. And I can tell you in most of the cases, people are using simulation in this case. You know, they, when the product is failing, they just call a consultant and they ask him, I want to know why my product fail. We have no experience in simulation, but you know the product fails, so we have to redesign it. How should we do? And then you have to be able to analyze this model and tell him, oh, this is, it failed because uh, there was not enough, uh, you know, stiffness in this area. You know, the stress in this area is too high or something like that. And uh, in this slide, you see that there's a video. Um, so I strongly advise you to watch this video. It's a short story about uh, the failure of a pressure vessel uh, and the video is called Failing Through the Cracks. It's like, I think, eight minutes video, so it's very short but very interesting and it shows you exactly this kind of case that someone designed a pressure vessel and then it, it after a few years it just exploded and it created a big problem, you know. And people were looking why it failed and they found that because some, you know, there was some problem in the design because of that and that and they explain you because of that. A very interesting video so you can go on YouTube and just search failing through the cracks and then you will find this video. <laughs>